All right, hey everybody, it's uh, Mike's video, and I've got uh, I've got my son with me today, and he's gonna um, go ahead and give us a little bit of info about what he has been up to. This is John. Hi, John. Hey. What we're doing here today is uh, just diving into some uh, activity that John's been um, involved in, and that is what would you call it, John? Just miniature miniature painting. Okay, and let's take a look and see what we're talking about when we, when we say miniature. You've got a little guy right there. Yep, so this is pretty much just a miniature, unpainted, just right out of the box as I bought it. And this is pretty much the subject matter. All shapes, forms, different games, depending on whatever franchise, whatever you're playing, or if you're just in the hobby for painting. But this is pretty much, when we say miniature painting, what we're talking about. Just a little plastic, miniature, or resin, or sometimes metal. They've worked away from that. But this is, I think, around 28 or 30 millimeter miniature. They go all the way up from like 35, 75 millimeter. But that's pretty much what you're talking about when you say miniature painting. Resin, plastic, little miniature, sci-fi, fantasy, something along those lines. Usually for some type of tabletop war gaming, or there's just busts out there. They come in a million different varieties, but when people say miniature painting, usually this is a prime example of what we're talking about. Okay, and so that particular um, miniature that we're looking at right there, mm -hmm. that uh, is that from a particular game or is it a particular character that's so this is for dungeons and dragons i think this is reaper is the manufacturer who made this and this was just a random guy i found i go often to like the local hobby stores and i'm just looking around for miniatures that i like to paint or something that looks cool or if i'm trying to challenge myself in something that's going to be like new so with this guy right now it's pretty early on but i'm going to try to do he's supposed to be like some little fiery demon or something like that so i'm going to try to do this glow radiant effect from like center outwards so like center of his chest and then go from a bright yellow orange all the way out to like a reddish skin so usually this is i you can use all these guys a lot of these miniatures will have names backgrounds whatever company game it comes from fantasy they try to always build a story around these guys but this was one just kind of a he came with a package there's like five other guys that look like him in different poses and then there's one big main piece and it was sold for like forty dollars and i just bought it because i thought the model looks cool so something to try out and just something that caught my eye so again just talking about the the cost of that you said this little guy here is running about forty dollars him four or five other miniatures plus the main guy and he stands around 35 actually that's not true he probably stands around like 40 50 millimeters and for the five or six guys these all together cost about forty dollars and that's actually relatively cheap depending yeah, so actually, there's no, that's standard price. Oh, so there's about six six guys in that forty dollar price so when you spend 40 bucks you get about six of those miniature sizes mm -hmm. so how did you get started um doing what you're doing this is like a multifaceted hobby miniatures i got started not painting but when i was in high school i would be going down to the local game store just right down the road from my house and i was just always fascinated into like just anything fantasy sci-fi you know like the nerd-esque type just side of things whether it was card games board games tabletop board gaming so and video games naturally so just seeing these models these really just caught my eye I first time I ever stepped into a game store I was just honestly blown away by it like it was just super cool there's these all these guys sitting around tables they're pulling just armies like just 20 30 40 100 plus models they're putting out on the table they all have their tape measures they're moving them around they're playing this game and it was kind of like seeing like I don't know a movie a video game just come to life and be able to play that with a friend so that's how it got started with me with these little miniatures i started i started with a just a i think it was a combat patrol set of ultramarines and orcs for like 200 a little over 200 dollars, and that came with like a starting army of both factions so you could sit there and play with friends it was just uh, this cool new world i had no idea about for what i was playing like a squad of dudes 10 to 12 guys i'd have three squads a couple vehicles a hero or two and then some extra things like building my army list 
So that can be very expensive. It's a huge, huge money investment. And the barrier, that's why I feel like it's such a niche hobby. It, the barrier of entry just to play a lot of these tabletop wargaming or tabletop wargaming games are just, it's extremely expensive. And when did you like first start seeing ones that were not just the gray blanks um, and it started to become something that caught your eye? Like the games are cool, but I'm really digging the upscale version of them. They're painted and yeah, I mean, was that something that was clear and obvious to you that like these guys weren't buying these things this way? They were actually buying it from somebody who does the painting. So a lot of people would either try to paint it themselves and it was very much a color by number type thing to where you would just paint one tone, the body red, the armor, a metallic paint, and so on. And that wasn't really interesting to me. There was always a couple of guys who painted. Everybody would have a few, you know, painted guys. Like this one dude had a fantasy army, but their thing was a bunch of just chivalrous knights and each one was meant to be unique. And he would paint a whole army and he was a huge fan of football, NFL. He would paint a whole army Steelers. He did a whole army Bengals. Like he would just do that, and each guy was just a little different. So I like there was good examples. I'm like, oh, that was good, but the quality I didn't think was there. But I remember, to this day, I can't remember his last name, but the guy's name was Will, and all he ever did was come into the game store and paint. He would hang out, play a game here and there, but he always would be either at the edge of the table or just had his own table and he would just sit there for hours and hours and just paint and paint and at the time most of all of that went over my head as to what he was doing styles if any i can't even remember a lot of his works but i remember there was this one very big like i don't even know probably 80 90 millimeter big like just monster beast like all mechanical this giant model that he had just finished and it was actually he put it in the display case and he did that actually frequently. He would finish a piece either for somebody or just give it to the store to kind of display. And that was the first time that painting caught my eye. One day him and I were just talking in the conversation. I'm just sitting here. I'm like, it's cool to look at. It's fun to play. But so much of what people do in this hobby is the immersion aspect of it. I want to sit here like these guys are real. They're on the table. This is my army. I'm the general. And when you look at just a great plastic, it kind of detaches you from that. Just talking one day with him, he agreed. He's like, hey, I'm painting all the time. When I'm doing another model, when we have time and we can align it, I'll paint with you. I'll start, you know, have them put together. I'll teach you, like, how to take down the mold lines, like, shave them down to where it's just a smooth surface, prime it to, you know, the base color of whatever we're going to work with. He gave me a couple synthetic brushes. I think I bought a couple paints. And I just kind of, that was my first exposure into the painting side of the hobby. But at that time, yeah, I was more into the gaming aspect. I just wanted to play the game. And then just, I don't know, I think it was about coming up on a year and a half ago. There, my uh, close friend of mine, Mike, I started hanging out with him and hanging out with the family. And just right down the road, there was another store called Victory Pines. It's a great store. Not so much the gaming aspect with the miniatures, more of a board game store. But even that, we kind of call it the venue. Just high quality tables with you know a recessed tabletop with board game or table edges so you can roll dice so they don't fall off the edge and it was just a great place to hang out and i think just one day i was checking out just paying for my tab and on the shelf below the register it was a starter kit so i just bought it so this is the first miniature i ever painted he's just a space marine regular guy a little astartes i think that's centered there we yep. go and i did some extra work to him after the fact, like the decal, the uh, ultramarine, the U, the symbol on the shoulder. I applied that after. That didn't come with the kit. But this was the very first miniature I ever painted. But I just watched a couple of videos on YouTube on how to do it and just kind of followed along as best I could. There's a, there's a lot of detail right there. I mean, the painting and the highlights, the trim on his uniform, mm -hmm. all that's really done well what stands out for me is the turf that he's standing on okay. especially that little bit of i guess that grass that's there I mean, okay yeah what, the yeah, what, grass tough. yeah what is that so a lot of the stuff when it comes to like the grass the turf the gravel 
Like, that was something I just, that's wood glue holding on just loose gravel that you can either buy. It's literally just that little grass tuft on a um, parchment paper, and it's just glued. There's a little glue holding it all together on the bottom. So you can just kind of like, you could do grasslands, desert, all different shapes, sizes, colors, and all that stuff. A lot of people, when you get further into it, will build their own. But it was just something simple. I just saw a video of a guy who was making bases. Because that's like another thing, is just when you see these guys, all about the immersion once again, is just when you see these guys, you can have a well-painted, but sitting on a black base. It just kind of like, it reminds you like it's an action figure. Like this guy's out in the world, he's on a planet, he's doing something out in an environment. And doing this extra work for the basing just gives it that tactile, realistic feel. And so yeah, this is just basic little loose, fine gravel, not the finest, wood glue, painted it, tiny bit of dry brushing, a little bit of turf, and the rock is actually cork that I uh, bought little cork bits of, painted it, base gray, did some edge highlighting, just kind of gave it some texture. And again, that was your, that's one of your earlier ones? This is the, with that kit that I said that mm -hmm. I bought from uh, about a year and a half ago, the, he came with this dude, this guy, a little sergeant, and then, where is he? This guy as well. I don't know how well these are all doing in the shop, but these three all came together in the pack. So this is what I painted. And it took me, I don't know, probably a couple days at least. Sitting down with these guys takes a while. But, um, you know, I just one of those things. I was trying to get it as best as I could, actually, like, give it an attempt with what I had. And then, honestly, it just ended up in the past year taking off from there. I've bought more miniatures than I have painted. I've bought like at least a hundred paints now. Uh, a bunch of different turfs. Just, you know, anything and everything. And watching YouTube channels, tutorials on how to, you know, and then different painting techniques, layering, stippling, blending. But I just, I just got obsessed with it. I, have you, have you sold any of them? I mean, people no, nothing with... sold. I've only been doing it a year and a half, year and a half. And it's just one of those things to where like, I'm at that learning process. I'm very much like just exploring, experimenting, and trying. Anything that I think looks interesting, I just am just trying to figure it out. I follow a bunch of different like social media channels, YouTube channels on how to, like I said, do all these different techniques, you know, layering, stippling, so on, object source lighting. And right now I'm just trying to like get my feet wet into the hobby and see what I can do. How many have you done uh, up to this point, uh, do you think? Uh, I probably have around, coming up on 30 models I've done. I just go to the basement and I just paint. Yeah, th yeah, those are really something. If anybody gets into this hobby, curious, if any of this piques anybody's interest, Reddit, YouTube, there's a million different, uh, Instagram, there's a million different people who are honestly, like, genuinely phenomenal when it comes to this stuff. And I'm just trying to pick up as much as I can. And I'm getting to the point where I, it's, it's just taking off. I'm just getting obsessed. I want to see how far I can go, learn different techniques. But this is something you can develop a skill in, learn when it comes to just, like, you know, and just painting. Like, I'm even at the point I want to start, like, I have some canvases sitting in my basement. And I want to just, like, see what I can do with that. It's just cool. When you dip into it, you can, like, you just start noticing different things. And it just, if anything, further piques your interest as to what you can do because there's things like freehanding does exist in this miniature world i actually have an example of like my first little attempt with a guy i don't know this one's a little taller what the camera angle is going to do this was me messing with contrast paint for the first time so instead of just regular like thicker acrylic based paint uh to get a lot more people into this hobby they've come out with uh contrast paint so it's just pretty much watered heavily watered down paint and what it's meant to do is get into the recesses and where the raised edges are it'll be lighter so the pigments gather around the low points or at the center body of whatever uh, whatever your piece is so it kind of gives you that lighting dynamic effect of low mid and high tones and that's like the biggest point as to why they made them is so like people don't have to sit here and like layer or, you know build up the tones blend colors and all that you could just kind of put the base color on base coat the whole thing slap whatever color shade or contrast you have let it dry and pretty much a good chunk of the work is done for you no i was happy with it for the first time i wasn't expecting anything more especially not that but yeah
the banner I'm proud with, the bone effect, how it kind of has like the high low where it's like raised edges, it's bleached. The banner was a freehand little symbol. I just watched a quick little YouTube video. I'm happy with the way the eyes popped out. It's like this like thing glooming at you from the darkness or whatever. But that was just grip it, rip it, just go for it kind of thing. I had no idea or what it was going to be, but all the elements are separated. The red could have been brighter. The teeth are separated. You can see the eyes. I didn't do a good job on the tongue that's coming out of it just because it's very dark tones with that leather. The leather itself of the banner, just like it's just old, weathered cowhide. There we go. We got that missed. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was one. Nice. Nice. Let's see. This is the most recent guy I've done. I did him actually just a couple days ago. So both shoulder pads with this guy, same thing as the banner, freehand the symbol of his chapter. I just did a Roman numeral two. I don't know, like a squad or something he's a part of. Uh, a little more weathering effect on the pouches and the gun. So this guy is different. Instead of like a box set of a couple dudes, every now and then the company who makes these guys Games Workshop will do a like set like there's a squad of six guys. You buy the box, you don't know which six you're gonna get. It's a mystery. So I didn't know what pose. Uh, this guy was going to be in, he has a name or something, I have the information here, whatever. Uh, so these guys will come, uh, and I don't have an example with me. Unlike the very first guy, that little demon dude, and we'll put him down here just as a comparison with you. This guy came as is. Okay. Mike, I don't know how, if it was 3D printed, I'm not that privy with a lot of this stuff, but he came as is, there was no assembly required. With this red dude, you had to completely assemble the whole thing. So the legs and the torso are two separate pieces. Oh, front wow. and back. You have to glue it all together. Hmm. The arms, so like the gun in his his right arm, the shoulder pad and the gun are a single separate piece. The left arm up to the wrist was a separate piece. The backpack was a separate piece. The head was a separate piece and none of it came on the base. So you have to, assembly is a huge part of it. You got to buy the tools and all that stuff. Uh, there's like mold lines that'll be on it and I think like around like the right side and even the top of his helmet you can see a mold line you separate those you shave them down you get a smooth surface because naturally just paint will gather there and when you have it it'll just that'll show but to most people it, it's a, it's hidden you don't see it but the people who paint are a part of the hobby it sticks out like a sore thumb and it's a pain in the it sucks it sucks because you can have a great paint job but if nobody if you didn't remove the mold line it just sticks out it's the first thing your eye is drawn to as somebody who's in the hobby but um, so yeah, you have to like it comes in just a sprue, all the different things like like I don't know like when you sa- assemble like planes, uh, models, metal models, they're everywhere nowadays in different shape or fashion, in different sizes, shapes, whatever how it comes across. You have to clip them all out, shave everything down, glue it all together. This guy I did what's called sub assembly. I painted each element separately. So the backpack I painted, then put on. But like for, I glued them to the base. It was just literally the legs and the torso, nothing else. Or I guess the shoulder pads were attached to it and the arms went into the shoulders, if I remember. So torso, shoulders, legs, that's it. Helmet I painted off him, backpack I painted off him, arms and gun, he wasn't attached when I painted it. And it's just a little easier that way because when he's in there, like if I were to try to get in on the left side oh, that's of the a gun gr- facing yeah, the that's a great that's a great point. You as a novice, I would look at that and not even not, not even think about, about you know, your that kind of you know, fine painting to be able to get in there and keep it consistent. And this is this is like to a painting style if you want to get all the nooks and crannies. There's a plenty of phenomenal artists out there who will like who don't. They just glue it together, they put it on the base. They'll base the whole thing black and then they go in with like an airbrush they'll hit where the light point is where the light point comes it's like or a zenith prime which is getting into it but zenith meaning from heaven so straight down white so the high parts if you look at it top down it's pure white if you look at it underneath it's all black so it's just how night light or the light naturally casts its shadow and people will just paint the raised areas get in where they can focused on what the eye sees and then they just leave everything else this style leans towards what's called Evy metal painting. Evy without an H, E-A-V-Y. Okay. And the reason it's called that is because that's the studio who paints all of these miniatures that are on the box. So the box art. Like when you buy it, the guys are like 
in a nice foreground on a tabletop with terrain and stuff and they're painted up super well. That's the style that they it's painted in. Most people, when you're starting off, especially with Warhammer 40K, you have a lot of tutorials, you kind of just lean towards that. That's what most people paint, whether they know it or not. You just kind of lean to that style. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, like a lot of painting. Painting everything, mid, low, high tones, edge highlighting, which is like you can see around his like legs, the greaves, the arms, the pads, even like the what's most shown is coming around on this red shoulder pad. You see that orange line right before it hits black. And that's so like when you're looking at a table top down or like you're standing on the table, you see every single element. You see it all. If you were to just paint it red, like imagine a coloring book. You paint the like color everything in, any subject matter, an animal, a person, whatever, and then re remove all of those black lines. It would just be a red blob in the shape and form. You can kind of see it. Sure, these are where the eyes, this is the low tone, whatever. But by putting on the edge highlighting, all the elements are separated. You can see everything very clear clearly. So I was kind of not knowing with this first couple of guys already leaning in that style. This one, like I said, it was just a one pack. I think I paid like $15 for it. I can't remember, $12, $15. And I figured out why not. I'd go for it again. And honestly, for anybody who's getting into this hobby, these particular guys are amazing to start with. And the reason for that is because whether it's volumetric painting, if you're talking about a light source in like, I guess in that realm, other than just coloring it, filling it in, the reason these guys are great is because in, and I'm starting to learn this, but in painting, drawing two-dimensional or three-dimensional, a lot of that elevated painting technique comes from... Uh, how light interacts with the object and everything is going to be within a f certain number of shapes and like cylinders, pyramids, squares, spheres, and maybe one other one I'm forgetting or a couple. I'm, I'm a novice. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> I really don't. I'm just getting into it. Uh, it sounds like you know what you're talking about and the evidence is right there. A lot, lot of YouTube. A lot of YouTube. <laughs> lot right in front of us. There. But a great example is on his black knee pad and on his left, like both knee pads, there's... Um, I actually, it's not the light hitting it. I built up the tones from black, light black, gray, dark gray, gray, up to the white, as if the light was hitting it. In certain areas, you can kind of like tell red is a hard paint to like kind of make it pop or show, at least for me. This is my first time painting red uh, power armor, technically. Uh, but yeah, it's just like I'm slowly, slowly getting into volumetric painting, stepping away from just color by number type thing, filling it all in, and just how this guy steps out into the world. And there are certain areas I didn't edge highlight. There's certain things like the metal or the black little like under armor behind his knee pad. I didn't go over any of that. I tried little new things like on his, um, that piece of parchment that's on his right shoulder. I don't know if it shows up, but it's very tiny. There's a little scribing. There's actually black. It looks like it's been written on. Like there's some like script or something on it. But you know, this one, the free hands on the shoulder pads, this was kind of like, checking in where am I at like when you're working out or something like kind of maxing out on the bench or something but not really it's like you're just seeing where you're at because I'm at the point now I'm understanding concepts I can watch somebody on YouTube and I understand what you're doing I see it everybody sees it but I'm starting to see the application the process the why the how but now I'm at the part of execution so this was kind of like let's check in I didn't go for it as crisp and as clean as I absolutely could I said it like I've said, I told myself, like, just a couple days, see, don't treat it like anything else, but just kind of compare it and see how much better, how much cleaner it is than the other guys. And I don't know, I'm pretty happy with it. I think this is something that any gamer would be happy to have in his little army, you know, running around the, you know, the little tabletop battlefield or something like that. Whatever. And, uh, from start to finish, or from beginning to where I am now, I'm pretty happy with it. And if anything, that's just showing improvement, but I have a long way to go with that. But for what a lot of people see and expect and want in this particular game, the painting styles that a lot of people do, I think this is in the conversation. I don't think it's going to blow anybody away or anything. It's clean for the most part. You know what it is. For people who are into it, they can look at it and be like, that's a Blood Angels Marine. Part of the story, part of the lore. Each guy has their own chapter. It's whatever. You get into the nerd hobby, it really just takes over. It really looks good. What, what else? Support? What else do you have? Um, uh, so, the la the guy, the model I did before this dude. I'm in the middle of one. I've, it's kind of something I've been 
hopping back and forth with. This one, getting a little PG-13 with it. I saw a YouTube video. This came blended, or this was two techniques. I did her all skin tone, like just regular flesh. And I talked to, I mentioned it earlier, but I layered up the skin tone. So she started completely black, 100%. Hmm. And then I did, as close as I could, a violet color over the black, completely two paint coats. And that has to do, like, the reason I did black first instead of starting with a base coat of violet is because when you start with violet and build the skin tones, it's very bright and how it interacts with the skin. If you paint black and then violet over it, it mutes that violet. It really kind of, like, helps out with the recess of dark tones. And it all comes down to styles. I'm, like, in the process, like, I I wouldn't say I have a style. I don't think I'll ever find a style. I'm just kind of, like, viewing, taking all the information in, and then just trying to emulate that. So, and I guess that's how you people can find their styles by copying other people's. Mm-hmm. And it's a great way of doing it. That's how I'm learning. But um, yeah, what is I'm realizing suits me is start your darkest, build up, go to where it's the deepest, hard places to reach, where the most amount of shadow is going to be cast. Work your way up to the high points. Gotcha. And so with her, like I said, layered all the skin tones. So the black, the violet, very dark skin tone. Then I went to a like a beige red then a beige and then a very light skin tone when you do it you can actually like when you layer it it's literally like I can't think of an example you're putting one color down you're going over the next color and you can still see it there's a distinct line you can see the separation then what you do is you go in you thin your paint down tremendously where it's a blend between the two you paint over that line and then with a second brush that's wet you kind of fuzz the line and it's Ah. like mix of like glazing a little bit to where that separation line of layers disappears and you have a beautiful gradient from low mm. to high tone. And then to get the green, I just glaze the whole color or the whole model and that's just extremely thin down paint, water it tremendously and you remove almost all of it from the brush. And then you almost it's like you're smearing it on to the point where like like just to get to that green skin tone, that's like 20 or 30 layers. I just I'm tinting it. Wow. I'm building it up as I go. And then like around the elbows the knees and her abdominal I did and the shoulders I did a pink hue as if like you know it's skin um, you know it's like you look at people's palms of hands the bottom of their feet it's a lighter skin tone and sometimes I just want to show like the blood rushing through or like you know it was a attempt at something I never dedicated a model to doing so I think it ended up all right there's a lot of mistakes but great learning process I feel like in a way, I leveled up on this. Very nice, very nice. Um, so, what uh, what else you got? Uh, I mean, probably. Well, all right. I'll show you guys this. This is Joe's miniature. Oh, okay. So what I mean, so uh, Joe is my younger brother, mm-hmm. and I was first painting the blue and red guys, and I, I kept like I bought a whole squad of twelve, and I'm like, at first these are just like. I was learning principles, how to load the brush, how to thin your paint. I didn't even know that was a thing. I bought a wet palette, which is just a sponge, parchment paper. You put the paints on it, keeps it hydrated for hours, but that allows you to thin it down. And you thin it down, you know, there's a whole reason as to the why, the how, you can blend colors, whatever. Um, and then Christmas time came. I was thinking about like just doing something special. I didn't know what or who. I'm like, maybe for one of the, like my brothers. I painted Joe, my youngest brother, a model for him and the model that I painted I don't know how the focus is, is going to be on this guy I hope Joe doesn't watch this before I give it to him so Joe hasn't seen this um, this is his Dungeons and Dragons character holy mackerel this one I won't lie I felt like I learned a lot and I really stepped up my painting skills especially around the teeth and the rope around his neck and the I love the stitching cape. on the back yeah, I, on the cape? I spent a good amount of time on that. Wow. I spent, I think, a little more time on the rope and making sure every single knot is visible and My showing. My goodness, that is something else. Holy mackerel. So for jo- so Joe started this Dungeons & Dragons wow. with, his, uh, with wow. his friends, and I'm sure a lot more people are aware it's becoming popular. You know, you build your character, and it's like this uh, you know, story you're constantly playing through live with your friends. So you build a character. Um uh, Joe's character was a Goliath, which is what this guy is, and he has a warhammer. Which so I just went on Etsy, did a quick search, um, Goliath miniature 
Warhammer, something like that, those three keywords. And within two minutes of searching, found this guy and bought it for $8. Or even lean it against the... Okay, all right, that's... Okay, okay. Oh, all right, I'm going to wait till it spins around here, and then we're going to go down. That's a dime. It's a dime. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna dissolve to this when the dime's kind of in the background, and then watch as it comes around here. This is a dime. And again, reference. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, so I plan on giving it to him when the family gets together and acts for like hanging out the house or whatever, and we're all there. I'm going to be like, oh, here you go. Here's your miniature. Because I didn't know this when I first bought it, but talking to his girlfriend, Addison, they use miniatures. Like, so his friend, who's the DM, the dungeon master, the guy who's making the story happen, all the, you know, he's pretending to be all the characters that their the party is interacting with, all his friends. Um, it's called like Draw a Map. Or if you're there in a dungeon, he'll do the layout so like you can like they can move their guys and like whatever. So there's actually some utility to it, and it's like cool, like immortalizing something he's really enjoying with his friends. It's really that's his character brought to life and not just in his head. Him and I game a lot on the computer, and every night he's always talking about. It. So yeah, painted him, spent a fair amount of time on elements. Not everything is perfect. There's definitely mistakes I've made and. I don't think they're going to be shown, but uh, or I don't think he'll notice, which is fine. Just to immortalize it further, Joe named this character Kiyothi uh, Don Collar Ogolatanu, or something like that. That's I can't remember. Mouthful. I can't. It's like Kiyothi Don. Yeah, because I think the middle name from what he told me is their role in the clan, and he has like you know his. his his whole clan was wiped out. Now he's on a revenge. He's a he's a blood hunter. That's why the red stitches. Oh, okay. You know, I would like sit there. We're gaming, and he wouldn't know. But I'd have my notebook out, and like as he's talking about it, I would just write down notes or like something I think that might be an element to stick out. Yeah, I was a uh, pretty pretty happy with the way this guy turned out. I think it, I learned a lot. Definitely leveled up in my painting skills with him. Certain things I will eventually get better at and walk away from like the metal his arm braces the hammer the belt i want to slowly walk away from metallic paints try to learn nmm which is non-metallic metal it's replicating so like metallic paint you can see like the brace anything that's copper or metal the way maybe you can see in the video when it turns how the light interacts because metallic paint has the metal flakes okay and oh uh, it might yeah go go his um his uh oh skirt that comes down, you know what I mean? The chain mail. Yes, that yeah. looks, uh, and I That's noticed all. that right when you put it on there, how uh, the detail there and how that really spoke about exactly what the material is represented there because that's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And this is, that's where like, I don't, I'm never going to claim I'm a good painter, not yet, a few years away from that because there's like a lot of techniques. So like there's things you can like, in a way, like I hate to say it, the way I view it, like if you, you say you're good, you could be a really good painter and just choose to put a metallic paint on a model. But in a way, it's kind of cheating because you are putting a paint with metallic flakes <clears throat> on a surface. You have to do minimal work, and it already has that natural effect uh, with the lighting environment. I got you. There's people who will sit there. It's like a whole gold guy. Like, yeah. I'll put, take this away. Okay. This is kind of an example of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and just, just for reference of, of brothers, I, I, I've got your... your, your Oh, God, you cannot show that photo. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> look away. What is this? <laughs> okay, all right. So I'm let, not in the photo. All right, so let's dissolve. That's no, all that's right, me. so here we go. I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Oh, of course, right, yeah. of course. Right, here we go. I'm going to leave the diamond here. Yeah, there, there, I'm stealing that. Nice. That's payment. <laughs> um, so, what I was saying, this is one of the yeah. painting techniques oh. I'm learning. So this guy, this is nothing special. I started him, got bored with him immediately, and stopped. I don't wow. know how to finish it. But, so all the gold, and even like the spear tip, it's just metallic. And what I mean, and the reason I say it in like a tone is boring. You just put that one layer on, you could put some like shade. You, you make, you take boring to a new level, John, because it doesn't look boring. It, oh, you well, know what I mean? I, I appreciate it, that. It's, yeah, that's, uh, it's still incredible because in the midst, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you no, really I get, uh, you know, get me thinking here. And, and the other thing too is because I'm seeing a I'm seeing a bigger version here on on my computer as I as we make this video I'm I'm seeing things like when I look over top of the screen and I'm peering down at that tiny little guy 
there's it's so easy to miss things and and with it you know showing up in full screen here there is some really heavy duty stuff going on i mean the model looks cool i wish my regret is because yeah, i just bought him i should have waited and not painted him the way i did and what i mean is like once again like there's artists out there who like matte acrylic colors and they make it look like it's a reflective gold that's perfect like a gold bar like mm. it's unreal you know what you're talking about so what you're looking at is the body the torso and legs of a warhammer 40k model like what i've already shown you with the blue guys it's in that universe and the arms which are a different gray and you can see it distinctly you can see what it is it's boba fett and it's like he stepped in out of Star Wars and into that world. So the armor is all souped up. He's got his uh, blaster that's significant to him. That's it's an E eleven blaster. E eleven. E eleven. Me and Joe played a lot of video games. Oh, nice. we, we know a lot of those games. Nice. Uh, so it has the jetpack. It has the helmet. So like that's an example of kit bashing. Once again, Etsy, a guy three D printing. He used that exact model that I gl attached it to as the example and I saw that because I was looking through like Star Wars miniatures because I knew for Jake and maybe even Josh I haven't figured out Josh yet that's the direction I wanted to go hmm. and the challenge for that model will be weathering like metal but instead of clean painted as if you know he's been through a lot of fights and it's like war it's like torn off and you can see the acrylic under metal <clears throat> coming out from the uh yeah, you know, the paint scheme. Like, you know, like when you scratch sure. your car, the paint finish immediately comes yeah, off. Yeah. And that line, the scratch, the metal just pops out to you and it's distinct. Yeah. So that'll be that challenge. That'll be the theme of that. Like, and for anybody in the hobby, like, Grimdark. That's like the theme. War Torn. Grimdark leading towards that. So that's uh, that's what I'll be doing for Jake. Nice. Nice. And uh, Josh, nice. I haven't figured it out. I know Joe or Addison has asked me to do because she's playing D and D now. She has a character, so I just have to find. Uh, she told me that she told me what character it is. I can't remember, but I got to find the model. I'll paint that for her. Nice. So yeah, it's just a fun way of like another excuse to lock myself in the basement, sit there for hours, paint. Each one I'm trying to do different styles out to teach myself, and it's cool to like be able to give the gift. It's going to be shown. Joe's model, Jordan's model already sits on the shelf. It'll just be there in existence. You know what I mean? I'm not playing with these miniatures. I'm not into that scene. And um, it's just like, you know, if you're trying to step into this, if I could say anything about an art median, I would say, like, if you're into it, any nerd aspect, like, get into miniature painting. And the reason for that is you can learn a lot of painting styles, and the picture is already there. I don't have to worry about a blank canvas and my mind going blank. I don't have to think about a beautiful landscape because it's not in my head and like try to do the, the mountains, the trees, the bush, the bunny, whatever. The Bob Ross, the happy trees and all that crap. I could, you could talk, I could, you know, anybody could talk to you all day and show you even um, all the different techniques, painting uh, or layering, stippling, all these different things. But if you can't actually draw or paint what's there, like a leaf, you don't know how the brush stroke will fall and the paint streak will leave. Like, if you're not there, I'm not saying don't. But the cool thing with the miniature, it's like, like I said earlier. It's like color by number. The canvas is there. Fill it in. And then as you do it, that's a great way to be like, and because it's so fine, when you go to something big, it's going to feel like you have so much space to work yeah, with. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine that, yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm like, I want to kind of like start throwing myself at a couple of canvas paintings because I'm already sitting there and coming up with ideas and trying to think about what I can do because I've already, you know, I'm, I'm slowly stepping into it. And then once you like get good and like you're, or getting better, you paint guys who like, you know, you can't paint, this, paint the same thing all the time or else you'll just know that one thing and become proficient in that. You have to really step out of your comfort zone and each one should be a challenge in my opinion if you're trying to get better. What else do you have for us? Uh, not much. I mean, at this point, uh, everything's kind of like a step back. This guy was a lot of fun. He was the first one I, like, after a couple of those Marines, I bought him. A lot more detail. Uh, I really wanted everything to be clean. I wanted to not have any paint spilling over. That was the goal. Not, like, shading, lighting, or anything like that. But every color is where it's meant to be, and it doesn't bleed over. You're not going to see... And there are some mistakes I could easily point out, but you're not going to see, like, 
the red of and it's coming around like great like there's four colors on that gun you're going to see the wax seal the metal the parchment the black of the gun everything's separated everything's there you can tell what it is mm. nothing's bleeding over mm. and everything is clean wow. look at the shoulder so that's a decal that is i did not paint that the the u and the uh, the red skull that's a sticker and yeah it's just like a transfer thing so like you just have to cut it out uh like with the shoulder if you, like step by step i can't remember because it's been a minute since i've done the decal the shoulder you do a gloss varnish smooth easy something that's sm like smooth all around for it to adhere to yeah, yeah. so you don't get a a fold yeah, or a... when you first put these things on it wrinkles that, like it's that's a sticker wrinkle yeah yeah it's it's yeah. horrible and a lot of people have a hard time with this he he was one of the first guys i ever tried it with a decal and ended up being fine it's actually pretty good so you gloss it you remove it you place it where you want to there's like these products i use microset microsol microset is like a glue and it takes a while to dry and then like once you place it where you want you take a q-tip you kind of gently roll it over the shoulder to kind of smooth it out there'll still be wrinkles and then you take a micro that was the micro set i think or no the set is what kind of like if you were to rub your finger over the shoulder pad if you can't feel it there is no rim there oh no, okay it's 100 percent smooth as if that thing was painted or imprinted on it yeah because that's the way that's there's no the... raised edge because if you were to put paint over it it'll collect yeah and you don't want any of that but usually you do it at the end of the process ah, so. gotcha um speaking of then decals if we can talk about that for a second of course. so as you progress in your skill level mm -hmm. and the whole art of it is that something that you look at like okay the decal came out really nice and it you know, smooth and that's a yeah, that's a whole skill. Yeah, it, right. And as you increase, do you find that uh, people that get better and better and better and deeper and deeper, do they tend to stay away from the decals, um, or do they incorporate them? So when you're talking about the hobby, that comes like that's a there's multiple answers. Like if you're just painting for the sake of I want this to transfer onto the game. I paint, but I game, and I mostly want it to, to game. Yeah, Decals are fine, because when it comes down to it, like if I were to be in an official tournament or play an army, they have to be painted properly. They have to be painted accurately to the lore, their stories, who they are. They have to have like that specific red skull marking, I think, tells in, you know, when you buy the rule books, it says like that that's the symbol of a captain, so that has to be there. Okay. So sometimes it's a necessity. Some people will just slap it on call it good. They don't care what it looks like on the game. Other people, you know, decals are, are bad. It could be a great additive, a great finisher, like that, something nice, clean, uh, clean and crisp that's on there. Yeah. Uh, but if you're, like, stepping into, like, a, con comp a competition painting setting, like, yeah. uh, I think Crystal Brush and Golden Demon. Don't uh, know what that is. Those are painting competitions for this hobby okay. that are well-known. And people who do that are phenomenal. <laughs> well, no, I follow, I'm actually a patron. I follow him on Patreon. He's Sergio Calvo. He's a phenomenal yeah. painter. Look him up. For anybody, the biggest piece of advice starting off and throughout all of this side of the hobby, painting, if you want to get into this, the biggest, the most important tip I could say is paint what you like. Just paint what looks cool to you. It doesn't matter. I like these guys because they're smooth surfaces, clear to find shapes. I don't have to sit there and guess. If I when, when I start doing volumetric painting, I'm going to paint more of these guys. A lot of people hate these dudes because of the amount of detail. They're just big, heroic, stanced, iconic soldiers or whatever. And a lot of people find these boring. I think they're cool. I do. But yeah. like that's the thing. Like I like paint. You know, you have to paint what you like. Yeah. If you want to go fantasy, paint you know dragons paint this paint whatever it doesn't matter if you don't like what you're painting it will be a chore you sit down even this guy for hours at a time you know you could challenge yourself and go fast but if you want to do it you want it as clean as you can you could sit there for five six eight ten twelve hours multiple sessions a day if it's something you don't like to paint you will you won't finish it mm -hmm. i have like three i'm in the middle of and every single time when i think i'm going to start it i get a little bit done and then i'm find myself again at one of my game stores that I visit. I find a model on the shelf. I'm like, I would much, that looks dope. I want to paint that right yeah, now. Yeah, and I just yeah. end up buying that up and I'll paint. And you know, I have like three guys who should have already been painted by now and they just keep getting pushed back. This guy, there's nothing special to him. I know it's like for a miniature, for somebody who's like just looking at it, it could be like, oh, everything's there. It's cool. It's clean. I could teach you in two sessions 
of just sitting down. Anybody can paint this guy. Genuinely, anybody on the planet can paint this guy. I could just show them basic stuff. If I were to give you like a wet palette, the paints you needed, anybody can color within the lines. Anybody can do this guy. This guy specifically, any guy really, but this painting, because this isn't a style. There's just like a little bit of highlighting you can see on the fist, this, that, and the other. And I didn't even do uh, the, the highest value. I just kind of wanted it to look clean. I didn't want those edges of a sharp, bright edge highlight to kind of, because I wasn't comfortable with that at the time, take away from the dude. I just wanted it to be clean. And if that's the goal, anybody in, any gamer, anybody, anybody in the world can do this guy. Anybody can. This is the easiest thing in the world. And when you get like, there's a lot of million hacks. Like when you get lost in like the detail, like when you paint on the metallic of the golden crest on his chest. Right there. You lose a lot of the detail, each individual feather. You just put the acrylic on. You do what's called a wash. So I think I did Agrax Earthshade, and these paint names are stupid. I'm just saying, if anybody is listening and they, you are in the room naming these paints, stop. Pa just say what the hell it is. Mm. Say it's a brown wash. Say it's a black wash. Uh, I hate looking at colors that, like... How like, it? Uh, McCrag I, blue. Well, I got you off nightshade. Nobody knows what that is. Yeah, well, Nobody knows the color. You need to just say Vallejo gets it right. You uh, say what it is. You yeah. say it's white, titanium white, black, violet, magenta. I love the names between. though. As a novice and you know somebody that's not even you no. Know, as a hobbyist, they're stupid. <laughs> they're dumb. <laughs> Very. Cool. I hate them. Yeah. All right. Let's see. You got you got something else there for us, John. Uh, if anything else past that, like a, a lot of the same red demon dudes. Yeah. Oh. Going back to PG-13. Okay. So she's unfinished, but this is a prime example of like what I was mentioned earlier. Zenithal highlight. Okay, here we so go. So I think zenith mean, is Latin. Don't quote me. Uh, but it means from heaven. So the whole thing is black. And then just straight top down, you spray. And this one was a rattle can. So you can see some speckle and rattle, collection rattle of pigments. Can? Just a rattle. What did I say? No, you said rattle can. Yeah, like, a rat, like, like, uh, like what you buy at Home Depot. Okay. Just a rattle can of gotcha. spray paint. Yep, yep. And you just spray it directly top down. And just right there, a lot of the detail is shown. How the light is cast. And it could, if anything, like, usually what people will do, black, zenithal highlight, a contrast paint, which is very thin down. You just put each color where they should go. They'll fall down into the recesses, the darker colors, and the highest points will stay extremely thin, and this white will show all the way through. The troll guy has the rock. The whole skin tone of this guy is a green contrast paint. On his skin, on the raised up arm on the left side, on his obliques and his chest, and as it goes down, you can see the specks, where it's like a little bit like a gradient, like it's not a smooth blend. That comes from a rattle can. Mm, mm. Eventually you can start, you get up, airbrush smooth that stuff out but with that example that was just on screen or maybe it is on screen um so when you look at it from the bottom up underside it's all black when you look at it top down it's all white and that natural value of light when you put that very thin down paint you just immediately get the result you're looking at the skin tones, the muscle separation, all that stuff. So for anybody who's just get, like you're into models, you don't know where to start painting, or for some reason you just haven't been on YouTube looking the stuff up, contrast paint, it's great. Slap it on. Most of the job is done. Details there. Move away from it. Move on to the next thing mm. or whatever. Mm. Kind of like you were the example you brought up with the decals, mm. or even I've said about the metallic paints. Not a lot of people will use contrast in that form when it comes to higher end painting because it's kind of like a cheap, easy, like, way of getting actually some value, uh, uh, a quality paint job. Because they do, if you do it right, they can look really good for just a model real quick and slap it on the table. Mm. Anybody can do that. Mm. That stuff is extremely easy. Mm. But, uh, and that's, that's like, the cool thing about this hobby. No matter what angle you're coming at it from, you're wanting to really elevate your painting, like I'm hoping to. Um if you're just wanting to paint cool models because you and your friends game and you just want to have something that's cool that looks like the guy on the table that you're playing as, you know, there's tools for that. You can go as deep into it and try to go as hard into it and, you know, as, as technically percent or precise as you can and just be really level up. Or you can just go super easy, color by numbers, just fill it in with base acrylic, put an ink, wash something over it to get in the recesses to show all the detail. 
and you have a great miniature because that's a beautiful thing about this once again like i said if you're trying to get into painting if you're also into this side or if it interests you at all gaming whatever you're looking at it from four feet down only when a judge is looking at it for like one of those painting competitions really does that create clean crisp detail matter everything else is just you know because when you're looking at it four feet away if everything's where it should be it's going to look phenomenal nice. but it's it's the easiest thing it's super relaxing i put i just go to the basement i pull out the ipad i put my airpods in and i'm, I'm watching peaky blinders while i'm painting this stuff i'm literally just watching tv and the more you, the better you get at it and you understand basic concept like i said loading your brush thinning your paints basic stuff and you've watched enough youtube and you understand like i've worked with red i've worked with yellow i've worked with whatever color and you understand how they all interact from low to high value Start walking away. Start painting your own things. Pick a guy like the troll dude that was shown. I found him for two dollars in a showcase. Everything, none of it was a tutorial. None of it I did a walkthrough of. I just had fun with it. I did what I felt like. I tried to experiment. Some stuff went great. Some stuff didn't. And I had I fixed it up. Uh, even the base in that photo or that video, the lava floor was an experiment. I did that the first time, and it ended up it was super cool. I sent a video to that to Joe. He was the one who sent me a TikTok of somebody doing the base in that style. I did it for the first time with a technical and just a yellow, orange, and red. Turned out fine. And then he was super into it. And I was like, hey, just have this model. You guys paint. See if your DM can wants to work it in as a monster you guys fight. And then put it on the table. Have fun with it. Whatever. Yeah. But for the vast majority of people, everybody will think it's the coolest thing ever. Everybody will enjoy it. Everybody will... Everybody will get into it. Everybody will love it. Really Here's great. another example of what I'm talking about when it comes to like minimal stuff. Like this is zero edge highlighting. I just put all the colors on. I did a black wash over all of it. Very thin down. It falls into all the recesses. It mutes the color. So, you know, depending on what you, if you want the first color, like the blue when it was first on here was more vibrant. I put the ink on. It mutes it. But this right here is perfectly tabletop ready. If you have a decent or an okay paint job and a good base because you're looking at it top down you're going to have a great miniature this thing is ready for the table this is if I were to ever start selling or painting for other people I don't even know if I would go into this much detail for that but this right there I would I would do another at least three hours on this guy Wow. do weathering make it look good paint something add a decal but right there if you're into the hobby and you like gaming or you're playing Dungeons and Dragons or whatever just put the colors where they need to go. The blues, where the blues go. The gold on the gold trim. The blacks, whatever. Paint it. Make sure the lines are clean. Go over any mistakes. Throw a wash over it, brown or black, depending on whatever your subject is or whatever you want to do. And it's done. Everything that is there, even it's coming around, that metal plate on the backpack, the rivets around it, the ink fell into each little spot in between them, and that line and separation shows. All the elements are there. And there's some, there's a miniature and a model out there for everybody. Something that everybody will like. Yeah. Put your favorite one on the tray there and we'll close with... Uh... Uh, favorite one? I have to go with the most recent guy. Have you seen it? Uh, this guy, right? This The red dude. Oh, okay. I was super happy. Everything was clean. The sigil on his left shoulder was hand-painted. The go. values aren't... or the, the whites you can see through. It's not 100%. Uh, the freehand on the numerical value... Uh, on the right shoulder I finally was able to do something that was good when it comes to describing on the parch piece of parchment that I was saying like earlier this hobby can there's a million tools I have to buy the right brushes synthetic versus like actual like horsehair brushes or whatever animal there's a million different out there and it will affect and some are better and some help a little bit more but at the end of the day just buy something cheap buy a starter kit something mod like a few paints Really, if you understand color theory, you're already artsy, you already, you already know you need red, green, blue, a black, a white, and some gray, which you can make that already. You mix all that stuff and just paint. So with these guys, if say if you buy it, you get into the game. And actually, I haven't. there's a lot of games now where like they've made it to where you can just run one squad. Three up to like 15 guys, that's all you need, and you can play with your friend, like Kill Team, uh, Necromunda, there's a million others. They're really starting to make it more publicly accessible in the barrier of entry they're trying to minimize. But you're playing on this table that's like 
four foot by six foot or whatever and like they're running through like terrain buildings or whatever like i already have like like this past christmas i asked for terrain buildings but because they're so big and when you put it together and i haven't yet but you see photos of it's this big it's this big building that's like compared to the model it's it's a big building and the problem is i don't want to just color it edge highlight and then just have it crystal like if this thing's war torn i'm weathering it i'm going to probably put some effects on it that's like i said dioramas if anybody like you know miniature train thing that's a hobby you know what i mean like build the world you're in you know what i mean there's a reason everybody was enthralled with uh you know, hello neighbor. What's that show? Oh, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Oh, Everybody yeah. loves the little. I did. I love the oh, little miniature yeah. thing, like with the town in it. It oh. zooms in on his house. Oh, absolutely. It's you so didn't... you anybody could do that. that like that... that set. I'm sure. Like yeah. yeah. Maybe because the, the camera quality or the footage wasn't great. I'm sure a lot of people poured hours into that. Yeah. But like, and when you start getting into those, like, you see miniatures everywhere. Lord of the Rings in the third Return of the King, when the dragons flying around the main city of Minas Tirith. They built a miniature city for those close landscape shots. Wow. There's like the what the this world is you can get into like you know a lot like and it it just goes from there. There's yeah. a million things you can do from it. It's it, for me it's extremely fascinating. I've always been into like the sci-fi, fantasy, claymation, miniatures, painting. I you know am learning and getting into and having appreciation for it. But like this guy like, you know. It just takes you a million different places. Start here, go somewhere else, or maybe you're doing something. Try this out. Like, I'm, I'm super into it. Most people will sit there like, oh, cool. Hoping to do more. Going to get better. It's a journey. Yeah. You want to start painting, get your reps in. Don't hesitate or don't think you need to be great. It's like anything else. 100 hours in any one particular thing, and you're more proficient than 90% of the population or some stat like that. Yeah. Well, John, thank you. It was certainly, you know, it was certainly great to uh, just view your work and talk about it. And oh, this is this, nothing makes me happier than showing off work. But this has been a year, year and a half in the making, and it's just cool to see this. Yeah. If anybody views it, that's awesome. If a bunch of people view it, cool. If you know what I mean, like if any, if one person likes what I've done, then it's right there. That's just cool fact. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I appreciate you sharing it with us and uh you know i'm just looking forward to what it is that you're going to be cranking out next can't wait to show it very nice thanks john no problem thanks for having me